and better and good every day that we have it. I love him, don't you? As we stand to the reading of God's Word. We'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 14 through 16. And the Bible says, Wherefore hear the word of the Lord this fourth amen, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scorn shall pass through, ye shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in sign for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste to say man as it is said. I want to title my message today from verse 16. A sure foundation. A foundation or a sure, the word sure means something that is absolute or something, amen, that is affirmative, something, amen, for sure that cannot be changed. And the foundation that I'm going to preach a little about today, how many understands what a foundation is? Amen. I'm not talking about that powder you put on your face. <laughs> Woo! Uh, uh, that's right. They do it at the other church. Come on now. Shout amen. <laughs> Woo! Good. I feel the Holy Ghost by that. Amen. I'm talking about a foundation. Amen. In the natural. Amen. A foundation is something that a house is built upon. And if you know anything about carpentry and the building and the construction of a house, before construction begins on that house, there must be a foundation laid. And generally, that foundation in the natural on which that house is to be built is made of concrete and block. They call them footers, generally a man on a house seat or a place where they plan to build a home, someone will come in, a man with a backhoe or some type of machine, a man to dig down in the earth, a man to go far beyond the loose sediment of the earth, and they will dig down. Now, in biblical days, a man, they would dig down until they found a rock. How many knows what I'm talking about? But nowadays, a man on the land and around here, they'll bring in that machine and they'll dig that footer, maybe 12, 16, maybe 24 inches deep, and then they'll bring in a cement truck and then we'll fill that ditch all the way around with cement. What they are doing is they are laying a foundation for a house or a home that people's going to live in. And then the block man will come in and he will begin to lay the block on that concrete, which is part of the foundation in which that home is to be built. Now, dependent upon the strength of that foundation will determine what that house can withstand. As far as the weather is concerned, you see, just here in the United States, we have, it is zoned out, meaning that different parts of the United States building contractors and to get a license 
will require certain things that has to be placed into the foundation in order for it to be approved. And that is for safety. Because in some parts of the country, there are hurricanes. And in that part of the country, they will have to construct that house wherein that when a hurricane comes to the best of their building, that that house, when it comes, can withstand that hurricane. Some parts of the country has tornadoes. Other parts of the U.S. is flood prone. And waters will come. So there's different zones. And I'll give you an example right quickly. Look up at the ceiling. When we were having this building constructed, it was a metal building. And the contractor that I was dealing with, he ordered this building from somewhere out west. And we had signed the contract and an agreement to build this building. And when it came in, the contractor called me in and he said, Ronnie, we got a problem. I said, what's that? He said, they didn't consider the zone when we bought this building. And we can't put that building up here in West Virginia. I said, why is that? He said, because of the snow load. He said, the trusses that we ordered will not a man carry that snow load. And he said, we have a problem. He said, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to order extra trusses and double every truss in this building just to comply with this zone that if a snow would come heavy enough that the ceiling would not crash in. Well, that was good. That is, for, we don't want to be in a building that is unsafe. And that is the purposes of laying a firm or a sure foundation that when tornadoes come or hurricanes come or floods come, amen, that house, amen, will stand, amen, the test of the weather, amen, and the Bible uses that same analogy with the construction of the church of Jesus Christ. How many know that the church is also referred to as a house? Jesus said, he said, my house, Woo, hallelujah, he said, my house shall be called of all nations, amen, the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves, amen, the God, and I'm telling you here, amen, right now, you, each individual, amen, you are the house, amen, the temple of the living God, amen, and I'm here to tell you that it is important, amen, that the foundation, and we are building every day of our Christian walk with God, amen, there's something to build, there's something to repair, there's something to make better, and you had better make sure that you're on a sure foundation. Woo! I've heard people of denomination say, all we have is the hope of going to heaven. <laughs> that always confused me. I've heard him preach when the Bible says we have a hope. And you know what I say? That if the hope's on you, God, you better get back to this order because I preach a no-so salvation. I, I preach a sure foundation. I, I preach if you'll walk right, if you'll live right, if you'll dress right, if you'll baptize right, if you've got the Holy Ghost right, you can't miss heaven. Woo. It's not a hope's on salvation. Man, it's a no-so salvation. I know what I believe. I know the foundation. And most of all, I know the rock, amen, that I'm standing on. And my Bible says that rock was Christ. Woo! You see, so dependent upon what foundation you build will determine, amen, when the storms of this life come. And buddy, if they've not already came in your life, they're coming. You've heard me preach it for years. 
Amen. You're going to have battles. You're going to have sickness. You're going to have tragedy. You're going to have things that come that are absolutely going to be hard to come through. Yet, you're going to have to do it. But determined upon the foundation in which you have built will determine if your house stands. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, what did that mean? The chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone means the beginning slow down, so a lot of you may not know much about building and laying natural foundations, amen, block laying. But when a natural house is built, and they're in construction, as I said earlier, they will pour that footer most often out of concrete. And in that concrete, they'll put a substance called rebar. It's a metal rod laid in that that they pour that concrete on that it will harden around that rebar, amen, to give its strength. Because I'm going to tell you something, I don't care how beautiful that house is, I don't care how many stories that it is, if it's not on a foundation, amen, the flood will wash it away, amen, the hurricane will blow it down, but if it's built on the right, amen, foundation, when the winds come and the storm comes, amen, you're going to stand. And they'll put that rebar in, and then... The block man will come in, or the block layer. And the first block that he lays is the chief cornerstone. And the block layer will know he can start in the middle of the wall. You see, a house or building generally has got four walls. And those walls have to be connected. And in order... To connect them properly, they will pick out a corner, and that's why the Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone, or the beginning stone, or where everything that is attached to that stone begins. And that block there will place that one single stone in that one particular corner, and then all of the other block that is in the foundation of that house will be attached to that one God. <laughs> Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost, but I'm in God. <laughs> they say, preach, that's all you know to preach. Man, I'll tell you what, I can find one God in a single block. And most folk can't even find it in the Bible, all oh, 66 books of it. Amen. I'm telling you, there's not but one God. There never was but one God. I'll never share that preaching. That one God, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And every block, no matter how high the walls are, every other block is connected huh, to that one single block. And when that block is finished, then and only then will they begin to build. Amen. With the wood of whatever the house is constructed. But they will make sure that it's on a firm foundation. Amen. And the church often referred to as the house of God. Jesus said, my house how many knows whose house it is? 
I'm telling you right now, amen, that it's his house. It's not my house. It's not your house. But it's his house. Amen. And the house I'm talking about is not this Pentecostal tabernacle building, but it's you and me, each and every one of us that has been born again. We are the houses of God. And make sure, whoo, that you're on a foundation that when hell comes, amen, and the things of the world, amen, come at you, amen, you have dug deep, amen. One passage of scripture says that they dig deep, amen, to go down and find the rock in which to build a home, amen. You see, and I build upon the foundation of the apostles. The apostles was not the foundation. The prophets was not the foundation. Read it correctly. They were only builders upon the foundation. You see, they didn't come until after Jesus came. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He is the building block. That's why, amen, the writers would look at him and say, you have the stone that the builders has rejected has become the head of the corner. That's what he told the Jews. They knew all about a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone. And the apostles preached, man, Jesus is it. He is a stone that the builders rejected. But nevertheless, amen, he's the head of the corner. I'm glad that everything that I have is connected, amen, to that stone. You know what a lot of people, amen, trouble is, and why they can't hang in there when the going gets tough, because they ain't connected. Woo! Man, if you get connected just right, it's like this little lady right here. She's missing you so bad. Had a pretty good read her right there. <laughs> She's a new mom. Give her a big hand. Huh? But I want to tell you something. When things come about in your life, and that was a good thing. A man that has kept her away from the house of God for a few services. And then there's bad things to do it. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what happened in your life, amen, if you're connected, amen, just right. She didn't backslide during this time. I guarantee you she missed every service that we had she couldn't come. So as many of you, when you're out and you cannot get here, amen, something comes about that prevents you from the house of God. Man, I don't know about you, but I miss her, don't you? Uh, and when you get connected, I mean, but you miss some time of untempered mortal. Uh, the Bible speaks of un- mortar is that substance that they put between the blocks. Come on now, how many knows what I'm talking about? Uh, some folk ain't got no mortar. Uh, or as the Bible says, they got untempered mortar. I mean, it won't set up and harden. If you mix that cement just right with the proper amount of cement, the proper amount of sand, and the proper amount of water, man, when that stuff hardens, you can't break those blocks apart, hardly. Is that not true? Now, I guarantee you, Sister Hannah, just as soon as she felt able to come back to the house of God, what did she do? Man, because she's connected, amen, and she got the right mortar, amen, connected her to Jesus. She found herself back in the house of God like many of you do. That's what it does. When you have, and they say, man, it don't matter what you preach. Oh, yes, it does. They say, it don't matter what you stand for. Oh, yes, it does. They say it don't matter how many God tell. Oh, yes, it does. Huh? There's not three blocks in this family. There's not three cheap cornerstones. They didn't have a block on this corner and a block on that corner and a block on this one and a block on that one and join them together. I'll tell you what they did. They started out with that one blessed block. Amen. I built everything else to it. Amen. With mortar that tied that building together. 
the apostles were builders upon this foundation. And the Bible says, another foundation can no man lay that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. They're trying to lay other foundations today. Denominationalism has laid other foundations. But the Bible says another foundation can no man lay. Then that which is laid or already laid, which is Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm not here before you today hoping I'm on the right foundation. I'm not here standing before you hoping that my mortar is tempered just right. Amen. There's no doubt in my mind. Amen. That the rock that I'm standing on, amen, is the rock of all ages. Amen. It's the stone that builders rejected. Amen. It's the rock. Amen. That follow them. And that rock is Christ. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion. Zion is another name for Israel and another name for the church, depending on the testament that you're reading here. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make place. And my point is, this foundation that the church is built upon of the house of God, amen, is already has been tried. And that means everything. Amen. It's like little David when Saul tried to get him to wear his armor and put it on him. And it was all too big. And David took it all off and said, I cannot, amen, use these because they have not been proved. I'm telling you what we got here today in this apostolic church of Jesus Christ has already been proven. A tried stone. It was tried hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Pentecost ever came. All that Pentecost is, is building upon that foundation that had already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. And it started in the Garden of Eden 6,000 years ago. I don't have time to go into it, but it did. There was where the foundation began to be laid. Amen. And the Bible says, a tried stone. Hell and the devil have been trying to destroy this foundation for hundreds of years before the church was ever built upon it. How, preacher? I'll tell you how. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, had to let the children of Israel, amen, go out of the land of Egypt, and they marched out into the wilderness, and they came up to this Red Sea. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he decided, man, I made a mistake by letting these people go. And they mounted their armies, their horses, and their chariots, and they rode out after, amen, the children of God. Uh, and they caught up with them at the Red Sea. And here came the enemy, amen, and here was the sea, and the children of God. Amen. The preparation. Amen. For that foundation of the prophets was there among them. And you know what was happening? Pharaoh was going to destroy, or the devil was going to destroy that foundation there at the Red Sea. 
And I said, whoa, but you know the story. Glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost, buddy. If the devil's on your trail, amen, just lift up your rod. Amen. How many knows who the rod is? Amen. He's Jesus Christ. Amen. Just lift up your rod. Lift up Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you begin to do that in prayer, praise, and worship, amen, the winds of the Holy Ghost is going to begin to blow. Amen. And something is going to happen. And the Lord said, when they cried out, while crossed out to me, go forward. No Moses raised up his rod, and the wind began to blow all night long. And the next morning, lo and behold, amen, the Red Sea was parted, and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. <laughs> Pharaoh tried to drown it, but water, whoo, couldn't drown it. Another king. Amen, rose up by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. And that same foundation that was being laid, that was laid using Moses and the children of Israel. Amen. There was three Hebrew men, young men. Amen. In the kingdom of Babylon. Amen. Who had defied. Amen. The king's commandment that when they were to hear the sound of the playing of the music, they were to bow down and worship. Uh, but there was something in them. See, these three men. Amen. They knew the foundation. They didn't know his name. They knew the foundation. And they knew that they couldn't worship any other god. Any other idol, amen, and they stood the ground. And they brought him before Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar looked at him and said, well, amen, I'm going to give you one last chance. Amen, and at what time you hear the sound of the play of the music, you'll bow down and worship my golden image that I set up. He said, well, everything is going to be all right. Amen. But, but I'm going to tell you something. They had been acquainted, amen, with the foundation. Amen. That chief cornerstone. Amen. That is the beginning stone. And they said, oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Amen. Our God, whom we serve, he will deliver us out of your hand. But I've got news for you. When you're on the right foundation, Amen. When you're connected just right, amen, to that stone, amen. If he don't deliver me, I'm still going to serve him. I'm still going to love him. I'm still going to worship him. No matter what comes down my way, I'm going to die to me. They brought the application, and I'm going to retire. And I'm going to retire. How many know this is a lifetime thing? Man, I'm going to preach to you people. You can't vote me out. I'm smarter than that. Woo! Glory to God. Man, I'm going to preach as long as I'm breaking my body. And as long as I'm physically able, amen, to come to this platform, I may get slower. My words may be more feeble. Amen. They got my messages may not be as fiery. Amen. I may be walking a lot slower as long as I can take one step and put it in front of another. I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I have to get down on my knees, I'm still going to preach the gospel. Amen. Of Jesus Christ. If I have to crawl to the pulpit, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no quit in me. You know why? Because when I got connected, I really got connected. Amen. I'm connected to the chief cornerstone. And I know a lot of preachers are tired. Uh, for me, Bubba, uh, I don't lay around and get mad and lazy. I'm going to preach the gospel. Man, uh, honest to God, you know what? Give me a camera music. I send that good for church. I said, Lord, I love this church. I said, I said, Lord, I said, I love it here. And I love coming here. And I love preaching to these people. 
how well being a part of this church can you bless a soul? Why would you do that? And I'm not here just joking with you people or whatever. Hey Amen. Why? Why would anybody want to leave such joy? Amen. Amen. And then have something that money can't buy. Amen. You can't purchase it. Amen. At Walmart or Walgreens or someplace like that. Amen. I'm telling you something. There's nothing like being in the presence of the living God. Amen. There's nothing like knowing beyond the shadow of any doubt. Amen. That you're on a firm and sure foundation. Amen. And that if you'll stay on that foundation when the winds blow. Amen. And the floods come and the rains begin to pour. You're going to stay. For the Bible says, Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and the ghost and Noah said, No, sir, we're in this for the long haul. And if our God whom we serve, Amen, don't deliver us, being known unto thee, we still are not going to bow down and worship your false God. I'm telling you, when I got in this 40 plus years ago, Amen, I got in it for the long haul. Amen, I'm here. I want to go to heaven, no truth. When I die, I want to hear him say, Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I want to make you ruler over many. You see, we've been in too long. We haven't quit now. We've come too far. Even you young ones. You see, time may not last for you to be in 40 years or 20 years or maybe five years. And what time you have in it, you've already been in it too long. And I was thinking, as long as I maintain that mentality, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know the story. God indeed delivered them. You know why? Because fire couldn't burn it. Daniel was cast into the lion's den, and you know what happened? The angel shut the mouths of the lions. You know why? Because this movement, this foundation, this apostolic movement, amen, lions couldn't use it. You see, that's the same as we come in close. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Speaking to you, you young ones, listen to this. The middle age and the elderly as well. Jesus said to us, each of his houses, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which build his house upon a rock. And the flood descended, and the rains came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house. I'm not here to tell you that at times you're not going to take a beating. I'm not talking about a natural beating, but a spiritual beating you are. The devil's going to beat you with everything that he has to try to knock you off the foundation. Because if he can knock you off this apostolic foundation, then he's got you. But if you are built upon the rock, and when these things come, the Bible says, upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Always remember this. No matter what comes by your way in this life, no matter the hardship or the sicknesses or the tragedies that you suffer, no matter how much hell fights against this apostolic movement, nevertheless, he said, because there was two fellows here, and I won't go much into the story, that had forsaken the foundation. You see, because built upon this foundation was there's coming a future resurrection. And there was these two gentlemen that decided that the resurrection had passed already, Philippus and Hymenaeus, I believe were the names. And they went out preaching, man, the resurrection's already passed. And I surmise that they got that from 
they knew that Jesus had rose from the dead and that he's raising. There were many in the graves that rose with him and appeared into Jerusalem. And they said, no, it's the resurrection. But it wasn't true. Well, that part was true. But that wasn't the resurrection he's talking about. And Paul said, concerning the Philetus and Hymenaeus, they're going about preaching that the resurrection's passed already, which was a lie. And he said this, nevertheless, no matter what nobody else preaches, no matter what, no other doctrine that is preached, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knows his house. And that everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. A sure foundation. And I'm so thankful that one day God revelated my mind and opened up my understanding to who he really is. And that when he called me into the ministry, he revealed to me by Scripture and the Spirit how important that the doctrine is. Because the doctrine is part of the foundation that is connected to the chief cornerstone. The Bible refers to it as a building that is fitly joined together. And that's what the church. And it's not just this little church here at Assembly at Egerton. But buddy, God's got houses all over this planet. Here, there, and yonder. And you know something? We all have one thing in common. And that's the foundation that we're building. And that foundation is the doctrine of the apostles. The Bible says in Acts 2 and 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You remember Ephesians 2.20? And all built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets in Jesus Christ, himself being the chief cornerstone. The apostles came and began to build upon that foundation the doctrine of the church. And when Peter stood on that great day of Pentecost and said to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, he meant exactly what he said. Nothing more and nothing less. He said it's for everyone. It's for you and it's for me and your children and your children's children. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call, he said. And Peter stood upon that foundation preaching that message. And when the storms came, and according to history, Peter was apprehended, judgment was passed, and they executed him. They were going to crucify him. And if history is correct, they said Peter asked one thing. What is it, Peter? Don't crucify me like Jesus was, for I'm not worthy. Crucify me upside down, and according to history of the book. Ten out of the twelve original apostles saw or seen martyrdom. They were killed, except John, who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. In Judas is killed, he hung himself. After the pot, the apostles were martyred and died. Others rose up. Stephen was stoned. And at that time, the church, the houses of God, the Roman Empire, began to execute and slaughter them by criminals. But they was built upon the foundation that kept. How many is left for the foundation? 
Dear Lord, we want to give you an invitation to pray. If you're seeking for the Holy Ghost, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So as they begin to sing, let's just get around these altars and let us begin to worship. Amen. 